On the one hand, we have a mini Saturn V. On the other, a mini N1. And we are going to be putting these two mini recreation thingies on a uh, on a race we're gonna race in the two of them to the mun uh and back obviously so um whoever w uh, gets to the mun and back on the shortest time when we're gonna be using the uh, the mission clock timer here in the uh, in the top left corner of the screen to keep time um whoever yeah whoever does in the least amount of time will 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 take will take a w right oh my gosh guys so we're gonna be starting out here with the inferior american technology also known as the saturn 5 more like the lame five but uh either way we're gonna get it fired up right about now here we go uh yeah i think mini recreations are kind of fun to do sometimes uh yeah i did a mini starship not that long ago and you guys seem to be you, know, you guys kind of liked it so i decided to do let's, let's do some more and i like doing them so yeah they're, pr they're you know they're, they're pretty pretty darn fun so our uh bottom stage for the saturn five is powered by uh swivel engines instead of the normal mastodon because you know like the so they're smaller, right? Um, this thing at the bottom stage had like spinny spinny, wanted to spin. I don't know what its deal was, but uh, either way, there we go. It is now staged away. And now we are going to be firing our uh, second stage, which is uh, normally powered by skiff engines in KSP. We are using terrier engines, and terrier engines have very, very, very little amounts of thrust. Um, so we're gonna be we're gonna be flying a very um well it's gonna take a while to get to get into orbit. Uh, the Saturn V is like a two and a half stage to orbit vehicle. It uses all of its bottom stage, all of its second stage, and then its third stage. It uses like half of it to get into orbit, and then the other half to go do its uh, translunar injection, get it on a trajectory out to the moon. Um, our in my little mini thing, to my proportions right, my my second stage quite or third stage rather quite quite a bit less fuel than you'd I'd like or less delta v than I'd really like in it so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get as much into orbit as possible with our second stage so um uh, I'm gonna try and burn it, try and get as much horizontal speed as possible um, with the second stage, because I really want to only use my third stage to do uh, to just get our little get a get us circularized in orbit. So I want to set my apple apps with uh, with my second stage. I'm trying to get as much horizontal speed as possible, so the third stage has a little amount of work as possible. That meant I was way too low, like we were below 30 kilometers, and we have a sh really shallow ascent profile, so I have to keep like kicking the engines. Um, after I've already burned them out, or basically, so I basically burned all my fuel in my second stage, so, uh, I guess it worked out, we got there, we got there at the end, so I can kick time warp on, I'm gonna try and go pretty quick here, uh, with the time warp, because, um, we have two, two rockets to get through, so th these missions are gonna kind of fly by, um, yeah, you're not not normally this quick my 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 videos, but hey, it's fun, isn't it? I don't know, maybe I don't know, I don't know. I, I think it'll be cool to see who wins. I mean, I already know who wins, and it's actually it's spoiler alert, it's not actually very close. Um, so I, I guess I guess you'll just have to stay tuned, right? So now we can deploy the uh, fairing, and you can see what I kind of made for the lander. It looks kind of weird. I tried to kind of generally make the same kind of shape as the uh as the apollo lander it not really but i i mean it has the gold at the bottom and i guess that's kind of you know realistic ish um so now we just done our translunar injection now we're basically out of fuel in that third stage we can do the little apollo reorientation thingy that it normally does and there we go one challenge is that we're only being one kerbal so it's hard to have sas on both vehicles um, because, you know, you can only have, you only, only have control one, so dockings are a little bit weird, but, uh, here we are coming in to Zimon. While we're doing that, I would like to quickly get some plugs out of the way, so if you want to join the video, you know, subs subscribe buttons down there, and you can, like, comment and like, I don't know if you want to do any of that, I mean, if you can, if you don't want to, obviously. And also join the Discord, Discord's great, we're getting a lot of people, can't wait, it's gonna be epic, uh, to talk to you guys, and we do challenges and stuff in there, it's pr pretty, pretty, pretty darn cool. And I'm thinking of doing some stuff on KSP Multiplayer, so um, it's obviously easier to do it if you're in the discord or you, you know subscribe oh my gosh guys subscribe and get my free gift card giveaway so here we are we've transferred the kerbal to uh, the thing where its head is kind of pop eh, then you slight design oversight but he, either way that thing looks kind of weird it looks like like an umbrella or I, I don't know what it looks like it's weird where the kerbal is sitting but uh here comes the lander with all the reaction wheels as it comes down to the to the lunar surface i think mean, both landers actually turn out to be really overbuilt um so yeah we, we have quite a bit of delta v to play with so we can do a, ni a nice smooth little landing and there we go hey we made it and then you can turn off SCS. 
then we can go ahead and quickly, quickly plant a flag. Um, the flag is not like a NASA flag, it's just a random flag that I chose, because I guess, I guess I'm lazy, or I just kind of forgot to change before I launched. And then it tipped over, that's like one of a, a weird 1.11 bug, I don't know why it does that, I don't know, weird. There's actually a really weird glitch you'll see that happens with the N1 later on in the video, like really weird. Um, you'll have to, if anyone can uh, watch, if you see that part, if anyone has any idea what that is, let me know. So here we go, we are now staging away the bottom stage of the lander, now we are firing the upper stage of the Apollo lander and getting ready to to, uh, getting ready to head back. Now, um, while I'm doing this, I want to quickly say, uh, like, I've done quite a, some, like, versus videos before. I normally do them as, like, there's a split screen, and then I do both of them, and then whichever gets back first gets back, and uh, I've gotten quite a few comments on those saying, like, hey, you know, uh, the editing kind of screws it up. You should use the mission timer. Um, and I said, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna try a different format today for them. So let me know what you guys think of this new format. Uh, I don't know if it's good or not. We do one and then the other. Um, I feel like if we did them split screen, it'd be kind of anticlimactic, because you see the, like, one lands first, and you're like, oh, wait, it wins, and then you're like, no, it doesn't, look at the mission timer, that one has, like, seven days on the, you know, it seems, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't seem right to me, but I, I don't know. So, anyway, we just dock the two together, we're gonna transfer some fuel from the lander to the, uh, mothership, because, uh, we kind of needed the fuel, and then we can plan our return back, so we're just gonna do one big orbit around, that's kind of losing us some time, but, hey, we can, I'm not, I didn't really try to fly these missions for speed, I tried to fly them realistically, so we could, you know, realistically see which rocket is actually better, because both of these are actually fairly close in the Delta V department, um, so yeah, I kind of had to fly this somewhat efficiently, so, here comes the, um, here comes the Kerbal heading back down. Forgot to put a parachute. That was a bit of a whoopsie. Um, so the Kerbal's gonna have to kind of bail out. Um, um, yeah, I guess. Hey, I mean, I bet that's exactly what the Apollo astronauts would have done if they just their parachutes failed. Like, I guess you don't really forget to put a parachute on. But hey, either way, pre uh, person Kerbal would uh, Ker Kerbal Kerbal Kerbally Kerbal. Wait, hey, that's a she. I was calling that like, her a he earlier. Uh, either way, flying through trees and now coming down for a nice, smooth, you can really glide pretty far with these, uh, with these parachutes, so, here we, oh, oh, any day now, any day now, it's really taking a while, I tried to do a really nice landing, and, wow, we're still not landed, <laughs> And touchdown. There we there we go. And that is the Saturn V done. So the Saturn V had a time of two days, two hours, twenty minutes, and forty-eight seconds. So let's see if the N1 can beat that. Alright, so we are now obviously going to the N1 and it is I I did it in one of my last video too. I don't know why I've been doing a lot of N1s. Hey, they're cool, aren't they? So <laughs> Um, 30 engines. The bottom stage is actually one of the hardest parts of the N1 because I couldn't really figure out what engine I wanted. So I ended up going with the um, the Vernier from the Breaking. I was gonna say Breaking History, Making History DLC, uh, which uh, we have 30 of them, um, just like the real N1, and we have this thing completely full with fuel. The N1 is quite close. Um, <laughs> um, like I said, even the Saturn V close. The N1 is closer in Delta V um, on the uh, on the getting to orbit stages and basically all the stages. But either way, uh, we're doing a really steep ascent profile with the N1. Just partly because it's kind of hard to control, I want to get uh, to the thinner parts of the atmosphere where it's easier to control. And because this stage really doesn't have a lot of thrust to weight ratio. So I used eight terriers on this, no, uh, yeah, eight terriers on this stage. Um, to put that in context, the Saturn V's upper stage had better TWR with five terriers. But uh, yeah, either way. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, the terriers really um, aren't very efficient at the uh, lower parts of the atmosphere. So. Um, the, the bottom stage does not burn as long as the Saturn V's bottom stage, so uh, what, what, what ended up happening is um, we wouldn't we'd be at the lower parts of the atmosphere, and the terriers wouldn't have enough thrust and wouldn't have enough efficiency, and we just like wouldn't make it anywhere. So I tried to not fire them till we got to the upper parts of the atmosphere. And what better way to get to the upper parts of the atmosphere than fly super steep? But uh, either way, we're there, and we're trying not to fall back down to Kerbin. Um, <laughs> trying to pitch a little bit steeply and here goes the second stage also known as block B now we're firing up a block uh, V uh, which is just four more engines and we are uh, yeah firing those just trying to get those this stage will get us into orbit barely just about um, but hey 
Uh, spoiler alert: the N1 Ub does make it into orbit. It's really fun making these mini craft. They're they're quite they're quite good. Quite quite nice little nice little guys. As we uh, as we power our way just about just about into orbit here, and then we get our app wap set, and then we can then we can coast our way on up there, and we can uh, get ready to deploy the fairing to reveal my lander setup situation. So if you don't know how an N1 works. Um, it, uh, it has, uh, in the fairing, it has, uh, what's known as, uh, Block G, which is what we fried up right now. That's gonna be our TLI stage and our slowdown around the MUN stage, uh, or capture stage. It, uh, does not have enough fuel to, to, uh, do a circular capture, so I had to do a very elliptical capture. So you'll see what I do when we, uh, after we do the correction burn, we come in and we only have about 90 meters a second to capture with, so that means, um, our orbit is really elliptical, as you can, uh, you'll see in a second. So, um, after that, in the N1, after you stage right block uh, G, then it's time to get out to the lander, which the Kerbal is going to now do right now. And then uh, after the lander, on top of the lander, there's a little Soyuz uh, mo uh, spacecraft, which is uh, just the uh, orbital module, the service module, and the descent module. Um, which is what the Kerbal will redock to after the lander. And the lander is also known as the LK, and I tried to also do a semi-accurate recreation of the LK. It's not at all accurate, I just kind of got the general shape, right? So the way the LK works is it's one stage. Well, it's one engine, two stages, kind of. So what happens is those outer fuel tanks will stage away when we uh, when we take off. So we're just burning fuel out of those. This thing really has a lot of extra fuel, but uh, either way, we are now landed. All right, the Soviets have landed. Um, yeah. So now it's time to uh, time to EVA the Kerbal plant that uh, exact same flag, which I think kind of does look like the Soviet flag. That's half why I chose it. Um, either way, we can um, we can get back in and we can time warp down to uh, time warp to where we can meet up with the mothership, and then we can get ourselves. Hopefully, come on, time warp. Let let go. Let go. We can get ourselves. Oh, there we go. We can get ourselves staged away and. Awkward pause. Hey, we're back up, heading back to heading back to Kerbin now. This thing can go pretty quick, which is uh, kind of cool. So we do have to get ourselves into that pretty elliptical orbit and dock uh, and do a rendezvous with it. So it does require a little bit extra delta V on the lander front, but it has like way more delta V than it needs. So uh, that that's all nice and fine and dandy. Get our maneuver node set up to our burning. There we go. And we can get ourselves uh, set up for an encounter, um, or a rendezvous, or a which yeah, a ron same thing basically. And then we can get ourselves um, slowed down. One piece, one really annoyance with the um, with the lander was it only had those static um, solar panels, so I had to keep angling it towards the sun, or else it would run out of electricity and uh, it would be kind of useless. So there you go. We can just transfer out. I didn't have any room to put a docking port on the lander. Um, in real life, uh, the N1, they would actually, they would have to do an EVA to, uh, to, uh, get across the spacecraft, because they dock, they had docking port, but they didn't have an airlock, so, yeah, that wasn't so good. <laughs> um, so now, we can get ready to head on back, and, um, we can, um, as we get back here, we can, uh, get ready to, uh, we're gonna stage away the, um, service module of the Soyuz, um, and, uh, oh boy. You guys don't see it yet, but look at that. The orbital speed is zero. Uh, our vertical speed is zero. And then he went into time warp and that happened. It says something weird on the orbital thing. We have basically left the Kerbin system. Like, I go to the map screen, and then if you, like, if you, when I go out of the map screen, you can see, because I have distant object enhancer, you can see the planets. They're all just, like, they're gone. Um, they're in the distance. You can see that the whole Kerbin system, I, that's one of the weirdest glitches I've ever seen. So, let us reload... Uh, quick save. All right, let's try that again. So here we are coming in. I use the Sputnik as um, a kind of a, a stand-in for the um, the uh, orbital module for the Soyuz. I think that kind of looks right. You can't actually put a Kerbal in it, obviously, but I think that does kind of get the general shape. I don't know if that. You know, what do you guys think? So after we do a quick error break, we can um, come down head first with the uh, um, uh, Sputnik. It actually turned out to be a great heat shield because I didn't have one on the actual descent module, which is like the cage that the Kerbal is in. Um, so yeah, after we after we do that, we can um we can get oh, well we finish our air break. We can um come in for our final reentry into the Kerbin and 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 normally like the or, um, orbital module and uh, whatever module or stage we do have to stage them away uh, like now um, or else the parachute won't have enough. But what is going on? Our speed is weird again. Look, it's like not even really moving. Our or our vertical speed isn't moving. I deployed the parachute, getting weird aero effects. Nothing is slowing down. Physics are completely broken. What the crap? It's hand. Well, this is where things get really weird. Huh. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just kind of froze in midair. Literally nothing I can do about that. Um, so I decided to EVA my Kerbal. Like, to, you know, like, we'll, we'll leave that magical being behind. And, uh, yeah, we can't deploy our parachute. That just didn't work. So I guess the Kerbal's dead. Um, <laughs> what is going on? That is the weirdest glitch I've ever seen, probably, in the whole game. We're, the Kraken, not having a good time. Um, anyway, um, well, that's the end of the race. So let's see, let's see who won. So the Saturn V did it in two days, two hours, 20 minutes, and 48 seconds. And the N1 was... Nine days, five hours, 19 minutes, and 22 seconds. Okay, so it's a difference of seven days. Um, <laughs> and one kind of got completely destroyed. Um, yeah. Great video, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please write a comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.